feeling wonderful today. So right now, in the Pokemon Journeys anime series, there's an arc right now going on called the Masters 8 Tournament. It's basically a tournament of the top 8 strongest trainers, and the winner would be declared the strongest trainer in the entire world. So I thought it would be cool to share my thoughts on what if there was a Masters 8 in the Beyblade universe. Who, who would the top 8 bladers be, and who would face off against each other? Burst. We're talking about burst here. No metal, no plastic. Also, Quick note, this is going to be my opinion on who is going to be entered in the Masters 8 tournament. If you agree with my opinion, great! If you disagree with my opinion, also great! Just don't be too harsh about it though. I'd love to hear on what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section below. But with that being said, let's get straight into this video. So we're going to start from the number 1 spot all the way down to the number 8 spot. Basically number 1 is the strongest as of now, and number 8 is the 8th strongest. And then after I explain all of them, we will go over the matchups, at least what I would like to see. So let's start off with the number one spot, which is of course going to everyone's favorite blader, the legendary Volta Oi. This is pretty obvious, as ever since the start of the series, Volt has started as a newbie, but continued growing to eventually becoming a world champion, and then even being known as a legend. Volt has gotten so much development throughout the entire Burst series that he easily takes the number one spot of the Masters 8. He would obviously be using his ultimate Valkyrie, since that is the latest Valkyrie evolution. Alright, on to the number two spot, and probably the most popular character of all of Burst. Volt's biggest rival, Shu Kurenai. Shu, ever since the beginning of the series, has shown to be a very strong player, making it to the semifinals of the District Tournament, to taking second place shortly behind Volta Oi at the World League, he even is known as a Beyblade legend like Volt and has shown to be very wise when it comes to Beyblade. Through all of Shu's experiences, he knows what it means to be a good-hearted blader and when your resonance may be taking over. Shu takes the number two spot of the Masters 8 for being a very wise blader and also being plenty strong. He obviously would of course be using his partner Astral Spriggan since that's the newest Spriggan being released. Unless you count the Astro Kid. The number three spot of the Masters 8 will go to another Beyblade legend. Free de la Hoya. Now I wasn't exactly sure whether I wanted to put Free at the number 3 spot or the number 4 spot, but I decided to give him the edge to number 3, even though number 4 is very close. We'll get to that eventually for one simple reason. That reason is, is that Free actually retains his blading skills even after losing his world champion title. Free is shown to be very wise like Shu when it comes to Beyblade, and thanks to his Bay, Fafnir, he is able to win battles without the use of a launcher, which is pretty impressive. Free gets the number 3 spot because of his amazing talent and that he's actually able to get some good wins even after losing his champion title. He'd obviously be using the newest Fafnir, Vanish Fat. Alright, on to the number 4 spot. Now this blader almost made it to number 3 as I said before, but because of a certain trait that I mentioned with Free, he was able to contain- continue- blech. He was able to continue winning after he lost his world champ, as with this blader, after he kind of lost, he kind of went on a losing streak. And we're talking about the Dragon Blader himself, Louis Shirosagi. Louis basically, for the first two seasons, was unbeatable. Only being taken out by Free and later Shu in the freaking World League. He even managed to break Storm Spriggan, crack Red Eye's mask thanks to his bay, Luinor's power. He even was the first Blader on screen to beat Free, even if it was an unofficial match. So, Louis is very strong. So why isn't he higher? Well, as I said before, after he lost in Season 2, his winning streak started to go downhill, and he kind of went on a losing streak. He lost to Iger in Turbo, never appeared in GT, and while teaming up with Dante, lost most of his matches in sparking to the other legends. If Louis Shosagi had gotten a couple better wins after his loss to the World League, he probably would have been number three in my opinion, but because of his losing streak, he gets down to number four. But hey, number four is still really good. Oh, and he'd be using Guilty Lunar, obviously. So for the first four of this video, I think a lot of people may agree with me um, because, you know, Vault's very popular, Shoe's very popular, Free's very popular, Louis's very popular, but they're all very strong in their own right. But these next four bladers, I think a lot of people may disagree with me on this, so I'll try to give my best explanation for why I think these next four bladers deserve to be in the Masters 8. Starting with the number 5 spot, probably one of the most controversial characters in Beyblade history, Iger Akabani. 
When Iger started blading, he showed a lot of strength right at the beginning, almost beating Volta Oi in his first battle. Iger even beat Louie, but he did lose to both Shu and Free for Legends, and as much as I hate these moments so much, he beat Volt not once, but twice. Claiming world champion, even destroying Volt's bay in the first match. But even with all these great feats, beating Volt, Louie, showing great strength from the start, aren't even the reasons why I put him in the Masters 8. The main reason I put Iger in the Masters 8 is that he's the only blader to ever truly beat Bob. I say truly because Ranjiro did technically beat him, but... Come on guys, nobody cares about that. It was about Real. It was pretty now, I'm sure that if Volt had faced Fi, he probably would have won. But we never got to see that, so we'll never know. Iger beat him twice in one-on-one -on -one battles in Turbo. And since Fi was shown to be a monster, breaking both free and a shoes base, two bladers Iger couldn't manage to even beat, shows that Iger has some true power to him. This reason alone gives Iger the number five spot. And unlike Louis, he's even got some good wins after Turbo like beating Dante and GT, and even being the first blader to beat Lane in Sparking, at least on screen. Granted, that was with the help of Hikaru and Hyuga, but he still beat Lane, okay? So with all these feats, why isn't he like number three or number two, you may ask? Well, it's, uh, it's because Iger had a lot of plot armor involved with some of his wins. There are a lot of wins in which he just shouldn't have won, but he still did. And also, being a newbie and all of a sudden just being very good, while it's a pretty good feat, just kind of makes no sense. I mean, characters that are just like newbies and all of a sudden are like world champion level just kind of isn't a really great character trait. Iger, <laughs> Trip, <laughs> a lot of others. As of now, the BU Achilles has not come out yet. However, when it does come out, that's probably what Iger would use in the Master's Eight. For now, he's got to stick with his mini Achilles. The number six spot of the Master's Eight will actually go to a character I just talked about. Fi. As I just said before, Fi was a monster in Turbo, and while he did only appear in Turbo, his feats in that series give him this title alone. He managed to break both Shu and Freeze Bays, and was undefeatable for most of the series, even breaking his own brother's bay, which was shown to be really strong as well. This was because his bay, Phoenix, has an armor gimmick where it would fly up during battle and land on the opponent's bay, basically ending them. Iker was the only character shown to be able to beat him, besides the stupid Ranjiro thing. Fi was an absolute monster, and just because he was able to crush so much legends, I just feel like he deserves the number 6 spot in the Masters 8. Now, since Fi never appeared after Turbo, I guess we'd have to give him dead Phoenix. However, let's just let's just take Prominence Phoenix and give it to Fi. <laughs> Fi can be using Prominence Phoenix instead of Pain. So, depending on your uh Opinion, Fi could either be using Dead Phoenix or Prominence Phoenix. It's really up to you. Alright then, the number 7 spot goes to another protagonist rival. Rashad Goodman, in my opinion, takes the number 7 spot for these reasons. Number 1, like Iger, he was able to beat the legendary Volta Oi while breaking Savior Valkyrie in the process. If you can beat Volta Oi more or less by breaking his Beyblade, that shows you've got pretty good strength. But not also that, Rashad even broke the almighty perfect Belial with Savior Valkyrie! Everybody knows Savior Valkyrie kinda sucks competitively. So since Rashad was able to break a Beyblade using Savior, more or less the chunky perfect Belial, that shows he's strong. Yes, I know it's the actual anime and not actual real life, but if this was actual real life, it would be impressive breaking the Beyblade Savior. Rashad has even been shown training with Voltoloi plenty of times, so he is not just a complete newbie, he's actually trained with Legends, so that kind of explains his strength in my opinion. For these reasons, I say Rashad will take the number 7 spot in the Masters 8, using his Beyblade Greatest Raphael. The number 8 spot in the final spot of the Masters 8 will go to our final protagonist of the Masters 8, Bell Dizola. Bell is very similar to Iger, being very strong right at the start, taking out Louie, Free, Shoe, and even Volta Oi with his Dynamite Belly. Since he was able to take out so many legends, then why isn't he higher? Well, that's because he would usually just make power-ups in order to win. Don't get me wrong, beating these legends is very impressive. But what would usually happen is he'd lose against the legends, then make a random gear, then win against the legends. 
shows a lot of plot armor and doesn't truly show the strength of Belial itself. Nori goes to battle for his amazing strength, but kind of plot armor just weighs like Iger, although Iger actually like took down a very fierce opponent being Fi. While Bell did beat Rashad, it just wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't the same like ending blading scenario. So that's why I put Iger above Bell. Bell would be using Perfect Divine Belial, as that's the latest Belial that has been released. All right, so those are the eight bladers I would say would go into the Master's Eight of Faith. There's obviously a lot of other strong bladers out there, but hopefully my reasons justify for why I chose these eight bladers. Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? Tell me in the comments. I personally would love to hear what you guys think. But enough of that said, let's move on to the matchups and who I would like to see face each other if this Master's Eight thing was really a turn. Now you'll notice we changed locations, but that's because I have each bay for each master as a contestant. Now you'll notice it's not the bays I would say, I said like that each of them would use. The only reason for this is that I don't own every Beyblade. So for Volt, we've obviously got Ultimate Valkyrie. Iger, we have Infinite Achilles. Free, we have Vanished Fafnir. But I think the rest, oh wait, Rashad, we've got Greatest Raphael. But for the rest of them, I don't have their final evolutions, unless you kind of want to count Fi here. I don't own them. So, for Louie, we have Raid Luanor, because it's the final Luanor evolution I have. Bell, we have Golden Dynamite Belial, because it's the only Belial I have. Shu, we have World Spriggan, and Fi, we have Revive Fed I mean Phoenix. So, with these big ways, I'll be going over the matchups I'd like to see. First of all, I'd like to see Volta Ole versus Fi. Since we never got to see this in the anime, I would surely love to see Volta Ole take on Fi. Now, by the end of this battle, I would assume Volta Oi would probably beat Fi, but I'd like to see the way he would beat Fi. Obviously, this should be Prominence Phoenix, or Dead Phoenix, depending on, like, what person you are. But I would probably think Volta Oi would take out Fi right away and see that epic Volt versus Fi battle we should have gotten. So Volt would move on to the next round. Fi would get kicked out immediately. <laughs> the next one I would like to see is Bell. Dysora versus Iger Akabani. And the reason I'd like to see this matchup is that because they're both plot armorish. Who is the better plot armorish uh, blader? To be honest, I would probably think Iger would win because he's just so much stronger than Bell. Prob especially if he gets a BU Achilles with like new swords. It would probably wipe Bell out. Since the swords are kind of similar to Savior Valkyrie, and Bell can and Bell's just a cheap loser. If Bell were not to use the gears, Iger would completely destroy him. So I would probably say Iger would win. Alright, next up we have Greatest Raphael versus Pretend this is Astral Spriggan. Rashad versus Shu. And now the reason I want to see this matchup is because Rashad is such a big Volta Oi fanboy that I'd like to see what would happen if Rashad went up against the fanboy's ultimate rival. I don't think Rashad ever faced Shu and DB, but you guys can obviously correct me if I'm wrong. That's what I'd like to see this matchup. Now, let's be honest, Shu would completely destroy Raphael. Like, nobody wants to see Rashad move on to the next round. Shu would obviously beat Russia. All right, for the final would be another epic match between Louie and Free. I chose this because, well, these two have kind of had a rivalry ever since God, and like I think they're each one win against each other. Like Louie beat Free in like an exhibition match before the World League, and then I think Free beat Louie in the World League, so they're kind of tied. Did they ever face after this? Maybe in Surge. I'm not quite sure, but out of all this, I'd actually like to see Louie take out Free for redemption for beating him in the World League. All right, these are the four I would see move on to the next round. I'd like to see Louie versus Shu. A lot of people would probably say Shu would beat Louie here, but I would actually like to see Louie beat Shu. Now, a lot of people are probably gonna be mad at me for saying this, but I'd actually like to see Louie beat Shu for one simple reason. Volt versus Iger. I'd like to see, obviously, Volt win. This is perfect because Volt can finally get his rematch on Iger for beating him twice, taking his world title away from him. Since Volt won this battle, this is why I'd like to see Louis beat Shu, because for the finals of the Masters 8 would be Volta Oi versus Louis Shirosagi. Volt has already proven he can beat Shu, but Volt, has he ever beaten Louis? I don't think so. I looked it up and I just don't think Volt has ever beaten Louis. 
So this would be perfect for two reasons. One, Volk could finally beat Louie. And number two, it'd be a perfect send-off because the, the final battle of the first season of the show was Volk versus Louie, where he stupidly lost because of a dumb crack in the stadium. But, you know, this would be really cool. And Volt would obviously beat Louie and win the Masters 8 competition. So there we have it. Those are my thoughts on what a Masters 8 Beyblade tournament would be like. Do you agree with me or disagree with me? Like I, like I keep saying, put them in the comments. I personally would love to read them. So we have Volt, Shu, Free, Louie, Iger, Fi, or Shad, and then Bell. Those are the eight bladers I'd like to see. Obviously, like I said, there's a lot of other bladers that probably couldn't make it. Hopefully my reasons uh, gave you a good enough explanation, but that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this Beyblade discussion. And I'll see you all later. Stay wonderful. Have a nice day. And peace out.